it's officially 10 o'clock and we are recording good okay i was going to show you guys something cool real quick i think um, maybe everybody might not have seen this palette on the video that i did before all this started when i sent you guys a video about supplies but i am loving this little palette i think it was only about 20 dollars or less i think it was in the teens somewhere and it is has a seal so you could close this shut even if it's got wet paint and then off you go turn it sideways and it's not going to leak it's nice yeah i like this thing a lot and then you can pop this out and you use this for painting on you can leave it in there it doesn't come with this i painted this as a reference myself but you can take that out and then you do have a lot of palette mixing space between the clear piece and all of the wells here um, with if you have a permanent palette or you're thinking about making one in the future when you squirt the paints out here you need to let them dry completely like hard as rock before you close it up okay because they will mold and do funky stuff okay so and ideally if you do have to close this up and travel you want to open it back up and let it dry between every um, every use what I've been doing is I have a I have drawers where I keep stuff and so I have a drawer just designated for open palettes and so they just stack on top of each other and so when it's wet I just pop it in there and it can just dry on its own it gets plenty of air and then later I can close them up so I really like that that's my new favorite toy and then this this was only like seven dollars I think the case not the brushes on Jerry's Arturama they have even better deals than Amazon and um, Blick sometimes. So I use Amazon, Blick.com, and Jerry'sArtorama.com. And I'll put that all in the last email as my favorite places to find supplies typically. And what's cool about this, I had one that was really long and it was just in the way. It was too big because it was meant for larger brushes. This is meant for watercolor brushes and it pops up. This. There, it stands up like that, which is cool. And so you can have all your brushes sitting in front of you and then just grab what you need and put it back. And it's, it's a hard case, so they're not gonna get, the bristles won't get messed up and nothing's gonna get broken or jumbled. Anyway, so that's another favorite toy I have right now. And if you plan on traveling with your supplies, both of those things are very nifty items to have. All right, <clears throat> we are ready to start. Got my reference photo. Hopefully you can pull that up maybe on another screen to have the picture that we're going to be trying to copy. That would be helpful. Either pull it up on another screen or um, maybe printed it out. Okay, since we're, I'm going larger, you do not have to go large. You could go really small. Just remember, if you go large, you need to have more of the colors mixed up so that you don't run out of them, and you need um, bigger brushes. Let me pull this down. I think there's another pupil here. Yep, there we go. Okay, now I can see you all. All right. And we are doing the portrait, so it's vertical up and down orientation here. Now, I said there was no drawing. I lied. No. <laughs> There's a hint of drawing. Okay, just, just a tiny bit. You don't have to, but I do like to just mark in where my horizon line is going to be so I don't lose it. I don't forget to stop painting when we do the sky. And then, the, so the horizon where the sky meets the water, and then this um, wave. I'm just going to kind of block in where I want that wave to be and that's it. I'm not going to mark anything else. We don't want to see pencil lines on this. All right, this base, this does follow the basic rule of thirds with the middle third is squished down a little bit but basically that's because it the artist wanted to draw your attention more to the sky. And we're going to do the same thing. So it's going to be more about the sky than anything else. So we want to try and get some nice, cool interest and in things happening up here. Whatever colors you use for your sky, they need to be incorporated in the water as well. So it looks like 
the sky is reflecting the ocean colors or vice versa, I forget how that works, but whatever. You want them to uh, kind of mirror each other. All right, so we got the little bit more than the top third is gonna be the sky, then we've got that middle third of the background, and then we are gonna do some interesting things with the foreground. You'll need a brush, either like an old toothbrush or a bristle brush, something with tough bristles so we can splatter at the end, make it look like little rocks and sand. All right, so let's go. With your pencil, it's not quite smack in the center, it's a little above center. Let's see, I think I'm happy there. I'm just going to lightly draw a line across there. You don't need a ruler, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm drawing so light, you're not gonna see it on mine. That's okay. You wanna draw very light on yours too. It's just a guide. All right, then let's say that breaking wave, all of the water is in a very concentrated little area. So think about that on whatever size painting you have, my water is going to stop only about an inch and a half, two inches down. So that's going to put my wave definitely on the right side and right about here. So all I'm going to do, you can see the shape of that wave, is it's kind of like a long rectangular shape. And again, after I sort of block in where I want it, I'm going to erase it again so I can just barely see it. Okay. I think that the biggest arc of the wave here that's coming and crashing over is right here. So you want to make sure that it looks like that and you get kind of a a nice curve right there. Okay, that's it. So no real drawing, just marking in spots so you don't lose it. I'm going in lightening that. And I am using Arches paper today. Just so you know. Okay, I'm excited and scared at the same time. <laughs> Here we go. Since I'm covering more ground, I need a little bit bigger brush that's gonna hold more water. So I'm actually going to use this very big one and a half inch brush. Oh no, it's just a one inch brush, it looks bigger than one inch. So I can cover ground quickly because I want this to stay evenly moist in the sky and not lose, um, not dry in one area before I'm done. But I do want to have my sky clothes mixed up first before I do that. So, if you haven't started mixing colors yet, you need a dusty purple and a light blue. Now, it's nice as I have a palette that's got a nice strong purple in it already. If you don't have a nice strong purple that you like of your paints, then you need to mix different combinations of blue and red until you get the purple you like. But I don't want it that purple, so I'm adding a touch of gray. <clears throat> and I want it to be more on the blue direction, so I'm also going to add a little bit of blue. A little bit more blue. I don't want my blue to be dramatically different than the purple. I want them to look like they are in the same family. Okay, that's not a bad purple. We'll stick with that one. And now I'm mixing the blue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to mix the color I want for the sea 
because I'm going to basically use that same color for the sky, just a lot lighter. So mix up the color I'm happy with for this C first. We're going for a natural blue. We are, it is a tropical scene, so there's going to be that turquoisey green color is going to come into play as well, but we're not there yet. Okay, and it's a very bright, sunny, well, it's cloudy too, but you can tell like it's just, I love this painting, always have. So you don't have to go super intense and heavy on that, that ocean. Okay, see how it's, it's not much darker than the sky. Okay, now again, these colors straight out of the tube sometimes are a little unnatural looking, even with the higher quality pigments. And I just like to add earth tones sometimes a little bit. So I will often add just the tiniest bit of gray, brown, or black to something. It just gives it, I feel like it gives it a little more earthiness to the whole painting. That's just my preferred style because I again can't get away from being realistic. Okay, I think I've messed enough with my paints. All right, ready to begin. Got a piece of paper towel handy because even though I'm going to be relying on the wet on wet technique to get this look, I need to have a paper towel in case I want to preserve a lot of white area. Okay, I'm going to encourage you guys to do the same thing. Now this is your sky, your painting. You could go any direction you want. I am going to try and get a similar look and feel to this. I'm going to try, and so I'll need the paper towel to blot out areas if they start to get out of control. Okay. Dipping in the clean water, use the biggest brush you've got to cover ground quickly. I'm going to start down here at the bottom of the horizon line first. And the reason I'm doing that is because if any area is going to dry a little faster, I want that to be it. We don't want a big puddle of water down the horizon line or it will take forever to dry and we'll never go to the, the ocean. So I don't mind if it dries a bit. I'm going to be going for a hazier look on the horizon anyway, so I don't need a whole lot of pigment to be down there. Okay, just painting with water. Turn your boards at an angle a little bit so you can see spots that you missed. It should be glistening. That's all we should be pros at painting with water by now. And again, the more water, the less control you'll have. So if you see puddles sitting on top, just know that things are going to bleed and blend like crazy, and you might not want that. So I want it damp, but not pulling. All right. I've got my blue, and I've got my purple. I'm going to start with the blue first. And... I'm going to, oh, nope, I think that's too dark already. Okay, so I'm going to go lighter with the blue. Forgot the name, I'm just going to water it down. Okay, it's okay if it stays a little dark at the top. I'm just going to do sort of some random little places. And it's helpful if you have the image in front of you because that's what I'm basing mine off of. And using that as inspiration. Again, do whatever you like for your sky. Now I don't want a polka dot looking area, so I'm going to that up a bit. I'm 
Okay. I'm going to leave the top alone for a minute. Once it dries a little bit, I'm going to come in and add a little bit more. I'm just going to leave it where it is. So here's our using paper towel a bit because it didn't want to lose any of that white spot. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of purple in here now. So I need to dry that brush off. Rinse it, dry it. Test the purple on paper before you do it. Right. Oh good, and the paper's drying a little bit because I want those clouds to be a little bit different looking. Okay, that's a little darker than I was going for, but it should dry lighter. All right, I want to pull a little bit of that blue into the purple and get them to join together and do some cool things. All right, now I'm going to merge that purple into the blue again. And it could look a little deeper, that would be okay. I think they kind of look a little like stormy clouds off in the distance. Okay, now see my paper's drying a little more than I want it to now. So I'm gonna go back in with just some water and wet that paper again. I don't want it super, super wet, just enough. Okay, because I want that misty look at the foreground, the foreground is on, on the horizon, I'm going to, I'm not going to paint to the very edge of the horizon line. I'm going to let it just bleed in to the wet paper. And then I'm going to take almost a dry brush and just go over the horizon line, which is just going to drag a little bit of that pigment into the water. And it's going to be very, whoop, I want a very pale area where it joins. Okay. I'm fairly happy with that sky. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Now's the time to bring your paper towel in if you want and dab and swipe some areas if you think there's too much on there. Okay, I think I'm okay with that. I'm gonna wait for this area to dry a bit and then I'm going to, I lost the darker look I was going for. So I want a little bit darker, dustier cloud over there underneath the purple. And I am working this sky a little more intensely than the ones before, but you still have to be careful not to overdo it. Okay, if it bleeds at all, I want the stroke I'm going to do to bleed down, so I'm going to lift this up. And I'm going to put right where the purple meets the blue. 
I'm going to put this darker strip. And hopefully it'll bleed down, not up. You get maybe the implication of sort of like a stormy cloud out there rolling in. Maybe. I don't know if that's going to help or not. Okay, if in doubt, just stop. <laughs> okay, step back, look at it from further away. Okay, you might not love it the first time, it's okay. All right, let's leave the sky alone. We got to make sure that this area is completely dry. It's not yet on mine. So let that dry. Go back to working on mixing up the perfect color for your ocean. We can also start getting this green color. Okay, now that, that is a place where using um, Viridian or what's a uh, phalo blue might be helpful because we want a very tropical green color. Okay, so try Viridian first mixed with some blue or try to mix your own green. Okay, but we want a very tropical look, but on the cool direction, so we don't want it to look too yellow. It's got to mingle well with the whole picture and look like it belongs. So where's my Viridian? And make sure I have a clean spot on my palette for that. Whoop, make sure you don't splatter water. I just did. Fix that. What was I doing? Viridian. Okay. See how Viridian on its own is a nice bright tropical green color, but there's nothing natural about that right out of the tube. So we still have to do something to it to make it look a little better. And that is an understated part of the painting. So it doesn't need to be crazy intense. I think if I just add some regular natural blue to that, that might be perfect. Maybe not. I got this huge puddle of this color now. I don't need that much. We're going to need very, very little of it. Okay, maybe it needs to be brightened up. Maybe I need a little yellow. Ah, it's not clean. Tainting my colors here. I fixed it. Aha, there I am. Okay, I'm happy with that. I added some yellow to the Viridian. And I think I'm going to like that better. And then I'm out of scrap paper. So I need another piece of scrap paper. Hold on. That chair makes funny sounds every time I sit down on it. <laughs> okay. It's one of those things you've got to get it right. You've got to get the color right before you proceed. Okay. All right, now I need to go back and make sure I still have enough of the dark blue that I want. It should look like a deeper shade of your sky. Sometimes the ocean looks very hazy and pale. So it doesn't have to be really dark, just deeper. All right, I'm ready to go. Let's see what the paper is. 
Okay, it still feels slightly damp to my touch. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want it to bleed into the sky, I'm going to stay just like one millimeter away from the wet area to prevent that, hopefully. So we can't sit here all day and wait for it to dry. All right, and I've got a brush that holds a lot of water. This is not a round brush. You could use a round brush or you could use a uh, flat brush, whichever you are most comfortable with that you feel like you can get these strokes out of. And the longer the fibers and the bigger the brush, the more water it will hold. I'm gonna load that, test it. Okay. All right, and the same way we did the water yesterday is basically the same technique we're gonna do here as well. I'm gonna do one line across the horizon first. I'll try and do that in one stroke. Try and get as straight as possible. Make sure it's close enough. All right, and let that be. All right, I'm gonna lay another one down right beside, and we don't have a lot of ocean to work with, okay? So see, it doesn't, you got one inch if you're going as big as mine. One inch, that's it. I need to make sure that as I get one inch down, my blue starts to fade and become lighter. Okay, so I am just doing this little area like maybe three strips, three strokes before I get to the wave. I'm going to stop. Okay, so laying down another strip, but every now and then I am leaving a little white showing so it looks like breaking waves. Make those little slivers of white very tiny and very unorganized looking. Okay, if they're looking like stripes too much, we don't want it to look planned. They should be breaking wherever they feel like they want to break, random places. Some areas should be really long. There should be some areas with no breaking waves. Watch out for the big breaking wave in the for in the closer to the foreground, close to the shore. You don't lose it. Don't get carried away and paint right through it. Now, as I get closer to it, it has a bumpy texture because of the foam. So I need to make sure that as I go over that area, so I think I'm ready to do it. I want it to stay bumpy, so I'm going to do this wiggly mark. Again, it slips down. I'm going to do the slope down on the other side. All right, now I'm going to just stay completely away from that foam area. And we've got to paint, we're about ready to do the green area and blend that softly into basically white. Okay, so we're gonna take that green, blend it into a little bit of white area here and let it sit a second, and then we'll go in and add the other blue spots. Okay, so I'm 
Where's that? Now I'm, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now. So I'll have a little more control. Let's see. And I think I want one with more of a point too. So I'm make sure I've got. No, that's not small. Mm, decisions, decisions. Okay. I'm going to use a brush about this size. I'll try this. Okay, got that green color ready to go. Don't want it to be too dark. Make sure it's light enough. All right, clean paper towel ready to go if we have an emergency. All right, along this edge here, there's going to be some white foam breaking. So I'm going to leave a little white edge. And I'm going to have a very bumpy, wavy edge here, leave a bumpy wavy white line. Just paint that in. I'm going to move quick on this part. Drag that out across the whole length of the wave, or just about. Okay, and now before it dries, going in with a clean brush that's just damp, I want to blend like we did on some of the turtle technique, I'm just blending a little bit of water into the edge of that before it dries. But it needs to be a little less damp than the paint so that it will merge and come down. Not go up. Okay, okay and there is a darker shadow right under where the wave would be arcing over, you know, so we need to put a little bit darker color. So it's going to be a little bluer. I'm going to take that Viridian color I mixed with a little more blue, and I'm going to just tap along the edge just a bit. So see how we're going to get like a deeper color under there to look like a shadow. I'm going to let that dry and see how I like that. I need to merge it into, whoop, whoop, there's an accident. Just my finger to paint on it. Fixed it. We need that pale blue. So we're going much lighter now. Think more like the colors you had in the sky. Okay, right in front of the wave, we could do some areas that are a little bit darker. And that's about it. Now we want to do is spread this out a bit. Get much lighter dusty blue. And there's going to be a lot of foam in this area. So we want to leave a lot of spots of white paper. Now this is tropical, okay, so the, the sand's going to be so pale, it's going to almost look white. Let's see if I can get those blue, the blue and the green to bleed together a bit. Okay, I'll leave that alone a minute and just, just let that area stay the way it is. I'm going to let it dry and see if I need to fix anything or if I'm going to leave it that way. Let's come back over to the right side when that's almost dry. Actually, actually, it looks like the top of my wave is almost dry and I do, I want a little bit deeper shadow along this little edge. So I'm going to add that now before it's too late. Very, very, very subtle. You want it to imply shadow, not take over. I'll do kind of a broken line. Just go back in and add a few little spots where, where I might want to see more shadow. 
And if the paper is still slightly damp, it'll bleed into the color and look seamless. And these kind of shadows are not perfectly even everywhere. Okay, so if there's some spots that are darker and some that are lighter, that's okay. I'm taking a fairly dry brush. I'll try and just I'm touching the edge of the darker shadow and sort of soaking up some of it so that it doesn't take over. Um, here's where I'm doing some fidgeting. Okay, so I got my paper towel. You do not have to fidget this much. But if you're used to doing that, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, now I'm really gonna leave that alone. Let's do the right side. On the right side of the wave, there's a hint of the green color, but then it fades. Most of the light, I guess, is coming through this side. Okay, so we don't wanna distract and put too much green over here, but there's a little bit. So it's a little bit here, in that corner. But then we're going to blend that out to blue. So now I'm going to get the light blue. Okay, once that dries a bit, I will add a little bit of a deeper shadow into that little corner. Take a step back and make sure your wave isn't toppling to the side. It looks even. Okay. All right, let's see what we're gonna do next. Okay, while we let that dry a little bit more, let's go in and work on that one inch of space that's in front of the wave. See how it's mostly white paper. We want it to look like foam with little hints of the purple and blue. Okay, so this is where the purple is gonna come back into play. There's some purple there, there's some purple here. So whatever purple you use for the sky, hopefully you still have some of it and you want to add some water to it and get it even paler. You shouldn't even notice that it's purple at first, okay? If you can just barely tell, then that's good. All right, and that pale, pale blue. All right, so we need a distinction from the wave, the crashing wave to the where it's hitting the water, but we want it to stay very foamy looking. So again, we're gonna just sort of imply some shadows a little foamy broken area. Very, very pale. I'm soaking up some of that extra paint. And then same thing we did with the the sea where it wasn't breaking. We're doing strips but this time we're leaving even more space, lots more white space. Oh, dark. I want them lighter than that. Lighter, lighter, lighter. You really can't go like too light for this. Okay, I'm gonna carry that same look and feel out here. Drop in a little hints of purple in a few places, especially if it kind of matches where your 
cloud is, where your purple clouds are, if you chose to do purple, purple clouds. Just some hints of purple. We don't want to look and be like, why is there purple water? Okay, so if it looks like we, drew, we did purple water, lighten it up. Okay, we're getting close to, we need a whole lot of space, remember, for the foreground and the sand. So now let's make sure, as we get closer to this line, that it's not a straight line across, okay? We have a lot of interest going on with the wave, so let's slant, like this picture does, slant down. Okay, so stop here and just add a little bit more foamy look, and let's pull the water down on the left side a little bit further so that we have a little bit of an arch slanting down to the left. Okay, I've got enough purple in there, and I want to be focusing on just the blue. Okay. And of course, where the water actually is the sand, where the sand is wet, I have looked at lots and lots of pictures. I love doing seascapes and stuff. And so I'm getting that merge between where the foam starts, stops and the sand starts is a delicate little confusing spot sometimes. And a lot of times, even in photographs, it will look pale blue. It just, it's like a flat, pale blue area. It's not white. It doesn't just jump straight to yellow, but it's the damp sand reflecting the sky. And so even though this artist didn't really put that in here too much, I'm going to do that. It's going to help my transition into the sand, I think. And it's going to just make your eye feel like it's more believable because it's used to seeing that whether you realize it or not. So this is sand now that I'm painting, but I'm painting it blue. And with just a touch of purple over here, because it would be reflecting more of a purplish color in the sky over there. Okay, I'm gonna fade that out to just water. All right, so you see how subtle that is, okay? All right, let's go back. We need to, while we let that dry, we need to go back and make our wave look more realistic. So remember I said I still need to add a little bit darker shadows along the edge here. And that's not the, we don't want our eye being drawn to this area. Okay, we want our eye being drawn to the brighter side on the left of the wave. Now, that foamy area is not pure white, okay? It's going to have little flecks of purple and blue in it. Hard to see that in this photograph, but it's there. Oh, another thing. Hmm. Yeah, now this is a master artist you know, that did this, who's painted this a zillion times. He was able to get a fuzzy haze along the edge of the top of the wave. I would have liked to have done that. It's a little late now. I don't think I'm going to be able to accomplish that without it looking messed up, so we'll forget that. All right, these pale, pale colors we used for the breaking foam water. We are going to introduce them to the wave. Have a paper towel ready. 
And we're just going to add little touches, almost like polka dots, but not. Okay, don't make them look too polka dotty. It's just some implied shadows, but the shadows are reflecting the sky. So the shadows are going to be purple and blue. And it's just going to make, we want it to look like foam, like bumpy foam. It's foam bumpy. I don't know. You understand. And I'm using the paper towel to stamp off any colors, any areas that get too dark. So I want it to be still mostly white. You might not you can go see that on the video because I'm going very subtle, very, very light. Like you shouldn't almost see it from a distance. You should only notice it when you get up closer. Not everything has to be in your face. Sometimes the more subtle, the better. Basically, we just don't want it to look harsh, harsh white, and we want it to reflect a little bit of the sky. Okay, so some of mine are looking too organized. Like I see like a line of dots. I didn't want that, so I'm trying to fix that. All right, and I feel like we could add a little bit, just a hint of a shadow under the edge of that wave, just in a few spots. Not much. So I'm going to get blue. And I promised you we'd end on time. I'm going to call on time 11 today. <laughs> The sand area will go really quick. The hardest part is just getting this water and these waves right. But just in a few little key spots. I'm going to add a hint of darker blue and then just fade that out. All right, I think I better leave that alone before I regret something. It's like watercolor, I think this is one of the lessons. Watercolor is one of those mediums where there can be mistakes. You know, people are always like, the whole Bob Ross thing, no mistakes, only happy accidents. That applies to things you can fix, <laughs> like drawings and oil painting where you can, and acrylics where you can just lay another color right on top. Can't do that with watercolor. So I would say there are times when there are true accidents and mishaps you cannot fix with watercolor. And that's why people either love it or hate it. Okay, I don't want this harsh line. That pale, pale blue started to create a harsh line along here. So I'm softening that up. I'm going to take a paper towel and drag that out. And I want this to be completely understated. I don't want eye drawn to this at all. So soften that edge. Okay, sand color. Here we go. Make sure you've got a clean spot on your palette. Again, so I'm going to wipe this area out. All right, so we need two basic colors. We need a super, super pale, sandy yellow, more on the brown direction than yellow, but very light, and then some deep, dark browns. But again, not so deep that it's going to distract from the whole overall feel. So if you went very intense with your colors, then you need more of a more intense brown. But if you are doing a very light, airy feel like this painting has, then we want it to be brown, but we don't want it to be distracting. Does that make sense? Okay, so whoop. Oh, and I need clean water for this. Okay, if you're, even though this is only 
pale, you can still see through it, but it's still darker than I want. So I'm gonna get fresh water. Yeah, sand, what were you doing? Sand, sand, sand. So I need two puddles of clean water. And I'm gonna start with, I have yellow ochre, I'm gonna start with that. You can start with a medium yellow. But since I have yellow ochre, I'm gonna do that. Yellow ochre is an earth tone that's often the base people, artists will use for creating their sand. Okay, now oh, yellow ochre straight out of the tube, painted really, really thin and light. I like that. I might just go with that straight out of the. Yeah, good. Okay, so I'm going to mix that. I'm happy with that. Now I need burnt umber. And you can create sort of a yellow ochre look to your medium yellow, just add a little bit of brown. Okay, so I want two brownish yellow colors that will look great together side by side. So burnt umber straight, but really pale, and yellow ochre straight, but really pale are working great here and for the darkest brown. So we actually need three. We need three shades of brown. For the darkest one, I'm just gonna do a thicker amount of the burnt umber. And this time we are not gonna paint wet on wet. We're gonna lay these colors down side by side. All right, then we're ready to go. Rinse the brush completely. Make sure you tap off and scrape all of the extra water so you're not adding water to the color you just mixed. Okay, and I'm starting with the yellow ochre or the pale, pale, dirty yellow you mixed. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna move quick, but I'm gonna paint along the edge of the water here, leaving a little bit of space. Actually, no, I'm going to join it right up to the blue, to that pale blue I had. I need to make sure this is very, very light. And it just takes practice of figuring out how light something's going to dry. It still surprises me sometimes. Especially if I want a very dark shadow and I, every time you paint it on, it's like, hey, it keeps disappearing. Okay, so you see how pale that is. We'll leave it that way. You can drag the paper towel kind of along the edge where it joins and that'll help it be more seamless and not create any strange shapes. Okay, good, like that. Uh, now, everything's kind of been slanting this direction. Now we want to switch gears and get it slanting the other direction. Okay, we want to create that zigzag thing again. We've got the interest of the sky coming at this angle. Then your eye goes down to the wave, then it comes down here, then it goes back. So we're trying to get a movement like a squiggly line or a zigzag line. So now we're gonna put interest here and slant it off to the right. Okay, or else the whole painting is gonna look like it's toppling over a bit. We want your eye to move several times. So we had the water coming in at this angle. Now we're gonna have the foreground going at the opposite angle. All right, so I'm gonna take just a little bit deeper sand color. I'm 
I'm gonna lay that in here, pinch it all the way down to the edge. And now because we are moving into the foreground that is a little rougher in texture, you could do a dry brush technique on the bottom half if you want. Or whatever. You can be, you want the strokes and the technique to look a little bit different so it doesn't still look like wet sand or water. Okay, so there's my base color. And now I'm going to deepen that on the left side. I'm going to add some darker brown. Whoops, that was not brown. What was that? Mess that up. Actually, I'll use it. Okay, and you could leave it like this, but I feel like it needs some more interest on the left side, which is why the original artist did it that way. Okay, we'll let that dry. And we're almost at 11 o'clock, but what I'm gonna do is on another piece of paper, I'll show you how to do those plants because you have to let this dry completely before you put the plants on top. Okay, and then you can do the plants in your own time. Uh oh, what is that? There's a little spot. Let's get it off. Okay, and there, if you get a spot, a splatter of paint that you're not happy with, just put some water over it, stamp it out with a clean paper towel. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let it dry. This has to be bone dry before we paint on top of it or else your plants are gonna bleed into the paper. Let's practice the plants a little bit and I'll let y'all go. I need another piece of paper. Okay. So for this, you need a skinnier, smaller liner brush, and you need very dark brown. And this is a case where you really should look up what the plants look like before you paint them. Because the one this artist did, when I looked them up before, I don't think the plants are that short. I think they're actually taller. I'm not sure what these are if that's what they really look like. Students in the past have told me that these plants don't look exactly like that. So you might wanna look them up. Remember, I'm, I don't like to wing it when we're talking about recognizable things because then someone will come to your painting and be like, something's off, I'm not quite sure what it is. Or a plant person will tell you, well, the plant doesn't look like that. <laughs> so if you really care, you don't have to, but if you really care, you might wanna look up some plants and try to copy them exactly. All right, so I got my dark brown here. Now there's two ways to do this. You could first paint an area like this first that's implied, just to get the darker shadows. And there we can do that with a lighter color and let that dry. Or just go straight into painting little grassy areas. And you're going to start at one end at the base and then come up and then just lift the brush quickly up in the air so that you get this itty bitty little trailing off line. So that the blades of grass would be, or plants, whatever they are, fatter at the bottom and pointier at the top. And you just keep doing that and layering. 
and have them go bend in sort of one direction for the most part because the sea breeze would be doing that to them. All right, and then you can kind of just add some more paint and mess up the foreground a little bit. Pull some of that color up in. And then here's where we can then do like the dry brush technique where you're dragging the edge of the belly with the brush to get that kind of look. You could go in with some darker spots and make them look like little rocks and dirt, whatever. Okay, and then if you want these to look not just like little grass, but like those little things that have the little whatever they are. I'm not a plant person either. Can you figure that out? Not a turtle person or a plant person. I appreciate both, but I don't know plant anatomy either. Whatever these little things are at the top, you know, kind of like wheat or grass, you know, has the little grains at the top. You're just going to take a slightly darker brown and touch itty bitty little spots on the ends to imply that look. See what I did there? Just itty bitty little spots like that. And I think that'll be convincing enough. This one over here, you do the same thing now and you just add darker spots on top like that. But I think I, think I like this one better go that direction with mine. And now splattering. If you want to do the splattering technique, you need to lay a piece of paper across the upper part of the painting so that you don't splatter on your nice pale sand, sky, and water. And then you take a bristle brush or a toothbrush, dip it in that darker paint, and then protect the other areas around, okay, because this can make quite a mess. And then I'm just like to flick it with my thumb. So that you're getting water off the toothbrush and get this nice fine little spray. Okay, and if you want bigger droplets than that, you see now this looks like really fine sand. If you want bigger droplets than that, then you just take a wet brush and hit it with your finger like that. Okay, so back to the second. We're done now. You just need to, after that's completely dry, mine's still not dry, you're going to put those little grassy plants on top. All right, we are finished. And I didn't end on time. I tried. <laughs> I tried. All right. Any questions? I can't believe this is the last class. I really enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. Will you show me your work? I wish it was hard to see on these photos. That looks good, Emily. Are you happy? Um, I kind of. Are you happy? It's the first time you did it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so hard to do the ocean because it has like my mind is like no, it has to be. Yeah, my mind's just like, no, it doesn't like how we have to leave the white spots in between it. Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the hardest thing it used to do is that you're preserving the whites rather than painting them. It's a weird thing. Okay, who is next? Also, I found, a little hard. I found the one I did oh, you, in your class. Ah, no, that was, so that wasn't last year. That was two years ago, right? Or almost three years ago now. Almost three years. Yeah. Yeah, so I always do like a very quicker, you know, faster version usually in class with everybody. Ooh, Cassie, I really love your sky. I'm loving everybody's skies I'm seeing so far. Nice. The water I'll show you I'm going to try to finish with grass. Oh, you're not ready for this? Yeah, that's ready. All right. Anybody, let me see another screen. Okay. Anybody else? Celia, are you going to show me yours? You don't have to. It's good to see your face today. <laughs> uh, really bad. I made a mistake with the paint, but that's okay. It was the first time we did it. Oh, you. 
I don't have anything so that I can cover up the rest oh, of my skin. Is it like the, the little, water technique? I'm mad. I like my water. What? It looked like the colors were nice. You only saw it briefly. It was bleeding into the sky, but that happens. Okay. I'm going to stop recording now.